Hey guys, I got some breaking news that just hit and this comes as a kick in the groin after spending all day and all night on this video yesterday. Waves has backpedaled on their genius subscription only pricing model. I'll have my thoughts on that in a few minutes, but let's roll the original clip because it's a lot of fun. Back from hiatus, it is the freaking news. So why has it been so long? Well, unlike other news sources, I only make videos like this when something actually happens. See, I believe one of society's greatest issues is the 24 hours news cycle, because when nothing's happening, that means you have to make the news. And that is why Fox News is getting sued for $1.6 billion. All right, so something is finally happening once again in the music business. And the big story, of course, is from the world of plugins. Now, I'm gonna ask you a question. Do you like paying for your plugins? Do you like owning the product? Do you lay your hard earned money down for? Well, Waves just passed down a gigantic fuck you to its entire customer base. Yep, that's right. If you've dropped hundreds or thousands on your Waves plugins, you will no longer get Upgrade. Waves has gone with the subscriber die model to squeeze you for every single penny that they can get. That's right. If you've spent hundreds or thousands on the Diamond or Mercury bundles, you'd better hope that they work on any upcoming platforms you might purchase. Otherwise, guess what? You're fucked. That's right. You will be absolutely 100% completely fucked. Unless unless you shell out even more money for the new Wave subscription plan. Now for the low, low cost of $14.99 or $24.99 a month for the rest of your life, you can be assured that your plugins will continue to work. Because what's better than owning your own plugins? Owning them and still paying a monthly fee. Well, I mean, it's pretty great if you own the Waves company because this is really gonna line somebody's pockets. I mean, it's almost like what happened in the late 80s and early 90s when the record industry convinced people to buy CD copies of the vinyl that they already own. Yeah. That strategy really worked out well in the long term now, didn't it? It's kind of the same thing going on here. They've already got your money. Hell, they already got my money. And now they've devised a clever way to keep you on the tit and keep paying for it. And I'm sure that's gonna be very valuable to the people in charge. After all, a company must increase its value somehow because the people at the top gotta to keep making those record profits. Those Rolls Royces aren't gonna buy themselves. And that means they need to convince you to keep going into your wallet every month forever. Now, fortunately for the shareholders, they've made this a mandatory thing. That's right. You no longer have the option to buy anything from Waves. Remember those awesome $29.99 Wave sales? I sure do. Well, guess what? Wave said, fuck you and took them down forever. They are gone. And let's be honest. This really sucks. Personally, I used those sales to buy personal copies of the Shep's channel, the L1, the C4, you know, the shit I use in my day-to-day -day productions. Well, guess that's not happening anymore. And here's the thing, with the new subscription model, the base subscription price is pretty great. That is if you're a new customer. Access to 110 plugins for $14.99 sounds like a pretty good deal. Especially if you don't have a lot of money to spend, which I imagine could be quite a lot of you guys. But upon further inspection, I see some of my day-to-day -day stuff is not in the $14.99 tier. The C4 and the L1 are in there. That's absolutely great. But where's the Shep's channel? That's in the Ultimate Bundle. And same with the SSL bus compressor. Really, Waves? So yeah, 110 plugins for $14.99 a month, except you'll need to spend even more for the really useful stuff. Wow, this deal just keeps getting better and better. I am altering the deal. Pray I don't alter it any further. Now, by way of comparison, McDSP will give you all of its plugins for only $14.99 a month, and that's including the bus compressor. But if you don't want to subscribe, you can still buy them. And that's not just McDSP. UAD also have the audacity to give you, the consumer, a choice. You can buy them outright or subscribe. It's up to you. And hey, don't forget about PSP AudioWare either, as they make some absolutely incredible stuff. Once again, with the purchase option. Hey, that sounds like they're offering the consumer an actual choice. And what are choices for the consumer? That's right, they're bad for the economy. 
Now, for those of us who actually bought our Waves plugins, I can't help but feel this is a bit of a bait and switch because this subscription only model came out of nowhere. No warning, no heads up email, just a giant middle finger with the word subscribe and now hastily written on it in magic marker. However, I could be completely wrong here. You guys tell me, are you okay with this new pricing model or have you purchased these already and are you feeling a bit betrayed? Now, a friend did reach out to them with some concerns about the pricing model and this was the response. Here are your thoughts. Thoughts. However, we see these changes for the benefits of our users who can now use all of our plugins and of course unleash its true potential with Studioverse. Which leads me to the inevitable question, what the fuck is Studioverse? And better yet, why should anybody care? Now apparently it's some kind of AI based preset system. Not sure if it analyzes the mix and makes a suggestion or you pick a genre and it guesses what you want. Regardless, I'm willing to sacrifice a few bucks to bring you guys a fearless gear review on it, so make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell so you can see when that video comes. Is it gonna be next level AI mixing or is it just some flashy marketing to get you to subscribe to their plugin plan? Hmm, time will tell. Now, if you're ready to jump ship and go with some other plugin providers, here are some alternatives to the Waves favorites. Now, I'd recommend that instead of getting the C4, L1, SSL bus comp and the Sheps channel, I'd go with the McDSP C2000 Multiman, the 4040 Retro Limiter, and the Channel G, not only for mix bus compression, but as a great alternative to the Sheps channel as well. It is super diverse and works great in many applications. Also highly recommend the 6050 Ultimate Channel Strip for some serious flexibility. I've demoed these before and they are simply fantastic plugins. Now Universal Audio also has some killer alternatives as well. The Universal Vision Channel Strip looks like a total winner, not to mention the Fairchild Limiter and the killer 1176 and LA-2A emulations by the people who actually make the freaking hardware. Once again, Universal gives you the option of subscription or buying your plugins outright and has gone native with their plugins as well, so you'll no longer have to be tied to the Universal hardware and PSP makes some absolute favorites of mine as well. The Infinity Strip has to be one of the most versatile and simply amazing channel strip plugins ever. This thing does it all. I've got an extensive review on it here on the channel and it's truly one of the hidden gems in the plugin software world. But don't forget about the Noble Q for a simply awesome Pultec style EQ and the Xenon limiter as well. And PSP makes it super easy. Just click the buy button and you freaking own it. No bullshit involved. No, really. Now, as I'm editing this and putting some finishing touches on the video this morning, of course, Waves makes the announcement, we're bringing back perpetual licenses. And to me, that is the sound of consumer outrage making a difference. You guys have said that's not fucking cool. And Waves have clearly chosen less profit as opposed to making none at all. Seriously, the subscription only model was an incredibly stupid move on their part, and I'm glad they're listening to their customers. You know, the people who have actually bought their software for the last 20 years or whatever. However, I don't think we're going to be seeing a return of the $29.99 sales anytime soon. Now that they've got the subscription thing happening, they're going to be pushing that as hard as they can so they can integrate this AI, whatever the fuck they're calling it. Now, bear in mind, the website has absolutely no details on how any of the upgrades will work or even if they'll be offered. So you might be stuck with no upgrade path. It remains to be seen. But in the meantime, if you're looking for some kick-ass alternatives, check out PSP, UAD, and of course, McDSP. But I really wanna hear from you guys. Are you okay with software subscriptions? Or do you wanna just own your own stuff? Leave a comment below and let me know what you think. Now, in other news, this episode sponsors 70,000 tons of metal, otherwise known as the most fun you'll ever have with your clothes on, is already gearing up for the 2024 cruise and just announced Porto Plata in the Dominican Republic as next year's destination. The cruise will go from January 29th to February the 2nd, and if it's anything like this year's cruise, it is going to be absolutely nuts. It's four and a half days of nothing but non-stop metal. I got to do the 2023 run and it was a complete blast. I saw a ton of bands, including Dragon Force, Camelot, and Nightwish, plus many, many other bands. And I do mean many. But it's not just the band. There is so much to do, like shore excursions, all night karaoke, meet and greet with the artists, and of course, the belly flop contest. 
The weather's great, the food's great, and most importantly, the people are great. The metal community on this cruise is really something else. Now, if you're a headbanger and you haven't signed up for 70,000 tons of metal, I've got to ask, why the hell not? It's a seriously amount of fun, and I hope to see you guys on board in January 2024. All right, so the last story for this episode is the case of Afro Man versus the Adams County Sheriff's Office in Ohio. Now, normally I don't do much content other than metal, but this one raises some very important issues when it comes to free expression. So the story goes like this. A bunch of cops that raided Afro Man's house looking for narcotics and suspicion of kidnapping were recorded destroying his property on his security system. Now, Afro Man, being the creative type of guy he is, made a pair of music videos using footage from the raid. Now, these videos did very well, and now the police are butthurt about it as they've been subjected to online ridicule. Now, not content to leave it alone, the officers involved have filed a lawsuit against Afferman for using their faces in his video. Apparently, these guys are unaware of the term Streisand effect. Oh, well, you reap what you sow. And now they want all of the proceeds from his videos, plus his concert ticket sale. Uh, hold on a second. I thought police were a public office in the United States, as in not secret police. The badge that officers wear is for identification. And once that badge goes on and the officer is in public, there is no expectation of privacy, even when breaking down an innocent man's door and rifling through his possession. So the argument goes that since Afro Man made music videos and profited from their images, that's somehow violating the law. Not to mention that the lawsuit claims the videos somehow made their jobs more dangerous. <laughs> yeah. Meanwhile, every single ironworker, fisherman, and roofer in the U.S. just did a collective eye roll accompanied by a massive bitch please when you consider that being a cop doesn't even make the top 20 most dangerous jobs in the U.S. Seriously, if you want to thank someone who puts their life on the line and make life better for the rest of us, thank a hydro worker. Now, here's the scary thing about all this, because if the police actually win this lawsuit, I guess TV news will no longer be a thing because they profit from using police images all the time. Because it's still equal treatment under the law, is it not? That means if the news can use it, so can Afro Man. Especially because it's his footage from his security cameras. After all, the police did choose to raid his house and appear on those security cameras. However, I am no lawyer, just an advocate for free expression. So for a legal rundown on this insanity, I would definitely recommend checking out the channel Lito's Law for his excellent video of why this has to be one of the stupidest lawsuits ever. But ultimately, I have to congratulate the deputies in succeeding in one thing by pursuing this lawsuit. They made Afro Man relevant again. All right, thanks again to 70,000 Tons of Metal for sponsoring this episode. Seriously, it's an amazing experience. If you haven't gone, please do. You are going to have a great time. That's the freaking news, and I am freaking out of here.